Hi everyone, welcome to your psychology class. Um, I'm Kim Eaton, I'm your instructor this semester. Um, looking forward to working with you. Um, and I just wanted to um, welcome you to the class and also give you just a little bit of information about um, how things are gonna play out, just in a, you know, sort of a, a broad overview. Um, and then uh, in the following weeks, um, I'll follow up with short instructional videos that have more to do with the content um, of what we're studying that, that week. So, um, you know, this one will be relatively short. In the future, I try and keep them 10 to 15 minutes. You know, you know that um, in YouTube, you can watch them in double time. So um, that would be, uh, you know, five to seven minutes um, for you. Um, so um, in the future, they'll be more content related, but right now it's just more mechanics. So welcome to the class. Um, and I hope you get off to a great start this semester. Um, every week um, in Blackboard, so uh, Wake Tech has a new um, Blackboard um, instance, I'm not sure exactly what you call it, but uh, Blackboard looks very different this semester than it has in the past. Um, so if you took a class over the summer, you might have seen the new, um, the new version. Um, the reason that I'm pointing that out to you is um, if you can't find things in Blackboard, um, let me know um, because it might be you, but it might be me. Um, and if it's me, I, want, I definitely want to fix it. And so um, a lot of times there'll be one student who um, is on it, you know, first thing on Monday mornings and sends me an email saying, you know, I looked through the checklist and I can't find this one thing. Um, and that's great. I love that because um, then I don't have a whole lot of other students who are looking for the same thing. So um, if that's you, thank you in advance. Um, um, so every week there'll be a checklist. Um, and um, the checklist is in the same order that things are in Blackboard. Um, and when you get into Blackboard, you need to click on each thing before it will unlock the next thing for you. So that's one of the new features in Blackboard. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have um, watched the whole thing or done the whole thing, but you have to have at least clicked on it. Um, so, you know, stay tuned on that. I don't, for assignments, I'm not, I'm not a student and I don't have the student experience. Um, so I don't know whether you can go on to the next thing if you've skipped submitting a writing assignment. You may not be able to. Um, so that's a long way of saying, um, I don't recommend waiting until Sunday night. If you want to turn in everything on time, you will not be able to access the quiz unless you've done the writing assignments. And you won't be able to access the writing assignments unless you have um, at least clicked on the instructional video and the slides and, and the um, learning objectives for that week. Um, so um, th these first couple of weeks, I think everybody will be getting used to it, including me. Um, for late work, um, you know, I accept, you know, my goal in this class is for everybody to um, end the semester with a grade of C or higher. I know for a lot of you, um, your goals are higher than that, and I want you to meet your own goals. So my goal is your goal, um, but my lowest goal is for everybody to complete, still be here in, at the end of the semester, and have a C or better in the class. Um, and so, um, you know, in that vein, um, I'm really interested in what you learn from this class, and, and in particular, what you will remember from this class a year from now or five years from now. So, um, I tend to focus on higher level things. We do a lot of, of um, more micro things or, you know, lower level things or, you know, more detailed, it's not lower level, but more detailed things. Um, but um, when it comes to testing, I tend to focus on some of the really big ideas. Um, and definitely for the final exam, I, I focus on bigger ideas and not you know, every single detail that you might have seen in a quiz um, or you know, something related to a particular chapter. Um, so the, yeah, so um, where I was going with that is um, every time there's a unit test, um, that will be the last day to turn in any late work um, that you want to turn in for that unit. Um, so if the, for example, if the exam is on chapters one through three or one through four, um, the day of the exam, the, the morning that the exam opens, is the last point that you can turn in anything related to the chapters that are covered by that test. Until that point though, especially for the short writing assignments and for quizzes, um, you can turn it in and, you know, I might not grade it immediately, um, but I'll go back and I'll grade it as soon as I can. Um, and I usually grade those for full credit. So it might say something different in the syllabus um, because I reserve the right for, you know, you know if, if things get out of hand with a particular course, um, things might change. But generally my approach has been, if you turn in the writing assignment, I will grade it and it will grade it graded for full credit. The only time that I deduct points for late work um, is for your major paper and we'll talk more about that when we get to the major paper assignment that isn't posted yet. Um, so um, in terms of um, working through there's a checklist, um, read the book um, and uh, if you haven't had a college course that has a book that's the size of this book, I have a couple of things to say. One is, you may have taken courses before where you didn't need the book. This is not that class. You definitely need the book, um, especially for an online class. There's just a lot of content in there, and I know that you don't want three hours of lectures um, every week from me, which is what you would have in a seated class. Um, and so reading the book is going to be critically important um, for you to succeed in the course. Um, I do put up the slides. Um, I don't recommend that you study the slides, but they can be really good um, as a note-taking vehicle. 
Um, when you're reading, um, my suggestion to students is to read the summary, the chapter summary first. This is not a novel, so it's not a plot spoiler. Read the chapter summary so that you have an idea of where that, where that uh, book is going, and this is for all courses. Um, then skim the, all the chapter. You know, read it as quickly as you can. Don't take notes. Um, maybe make a note of things that you want to go back to, but just get all the way through it one time at a really high level. Um, because if you do a close reading, um, you may only get a third of the way through, and then boom, it's the next, something happens, life happens, and it's the next week. So skim all the way through, then check out the summary again and see whether there are things in the summary that you saw and you still don't really understand them or you're still not really clear on what those things are. Go back and read those again. Um, it's not really helpful um, at that, you know, at any point, and especially when you're studying for a test, to reread entire chapters because you're going to be rereading a lot of things that you already know. Um, the concept there is called focused practice, um, and if you're interested in more information about that, um, Barbara Oakley um, wrote a really good book about um, learning math, but it's it's about learning, um, and I think it's called A Mind for Numbers, and I highly recommend that book if you have time and if you want to do some extra reading um, on you know the psychology side. Um, okay, so um, so that's my you know that's my suggestion for um, how you approach the reading in this class and in other classes. There's a lot of reading in college textbooks. Um, so the slides are out there, the videos will be out there. Um, I usually have short writing assignments. Sometimes I ask you to do something and then write about it. Sometimes I ask you to watch something and then write about it. But I try not to ever ask you to do something, watch, read, whatever, um, and then not ask you to write about it because I want you to reflect on what you just did and why you were watching that thing. Um, you know, even videos that are funny, you know, if you've seen um, Charlie Bit My Finger, that's a really old one, but you know, it went viral and it was really funny and it was funny because it violated our expectations in some way about how children react to things. Um, and so what I want you to do in this course is if you watch a video, and some of them will be funny, to reflect on why it's funny. Why is it that we think that's um, out of the ordinary? When kids say things that, um, that sound adult-like but they definitely don't know what it means, um, that's humorous to us because we're thinking about how children are thinking. Okay, um, so writing assignments, um, there'll be a quiz every week, um, and then a discussion every week. Um, there have been semesters where I took discussions out. As a student, I don't like discussions. I don't like written discussions. I don't, I just don't engage that way with people. Um, but, and so students said, we hate the discussions, take them out. And I took them out, and then the next semester, students said, wait, there were no discussions. We missed the discussions, put them back in. I mean, there are clearly different students, but um, there isn't one thing that works for every student. So we will have discussions. I try to make them as interesting as I can for you. Um, feel free to bring in current news, bring in other ideas that you've got. So, you know, just because I have a particular prompt about this week, um, you might have something else to say. And so you might start your, your discussion by saying, you know, here's what I think about the question that was asked, and here's this other thing that I'm also interested in. So use the discussions the, the way that you would use a classroom discussion, which is um, that you would interact with your peers, um, not in a five paragraph essay, but just what do you think? Uh, what's your response to this thing? What did you think about it? Um, and so I hope that the discussions will be interesting to you. Um, I've bumped down um, how much discussions contribute to your overall grade um, because I want it to feel more like a discussion and less like an assignment. Um, so it's only worth 5% of your grade. So keep that in mind when you decide how much time you want to put in to the written discussions. Um, if you have a lot to say, by all means, say it all. Um, but if you don't have very much to say, just recognize that um, it's not a tremendous amount of your grade and it's meant to be more organic um, and more natural um, than, uh, than a writing assignment or a major paper. Um, okay, um, so that's it. Um, uh, starting in week three, so in the, in the initial week, um, I've asked for people's feedback on when they might be able to join a Teams meeting as an alternative to discussion, because some people would rather really have a live discussion. Um, and so uh, what I'd like to do is schedule 30-minute Teams meetings starting in week three at a time that there's not going to be a time that works for every student because it's an online course, um, but it works for a bunch of students. Um, and so I'm, uh, you know, I have a poll out there, or a survey out there, to ask you what times might work for you. Um, if you will never join those, don't hesitate to say so. Um, I'm not judging you. The discussion board uh, option will always be there for everybody. Um, so if you are never going to join those Teams meetings um, and that's not your thing, then just say, I wouldn't join one and be done with the, the survey. Um, no harm, no foul. 
Um, so, um, okay, um, I think that's it for right now. Um, welcome to the class. Um, feel free to contact me anytime if there's something you've got a question about, if there's something that I can help you with. Um, and uh, I hope you have a great beginning of your semester. I'm looking forward to working with you. Bye.